Okay, everybody, I'm here for part two, which is the actual making of something. So what I have is some of these flowers that are now flower magnets that I made years and years ago. This one I made yesterday. Where's the rest of them? I think that's it. Um, here's another one that's a magnet. And we're going to make these today. They're very simple, very basic flowers to get you to use to pinching, twirling, gluing, pinning, right? So let me show you a bad example of not planning well enough ahead. If you see each one of these, let it focus, come on, focus. They look really nice and there's lots of different little twirls and swirls inside here. When you use a piece of paper that's long enough, you'll get a nice outside edge where it's thick enough, where the paper is thick enough with layer after layer after layer. But when you don't cut your paper long enough to make the size circle that you want, then what you're going to get is this very loosey-goosey uh, pattern. So let me see how about this one. You can see the difference, right? This hand has a nicer furl to it than this one. It's too open and too fragile. Now this is the quarter inch paper and this is the one eighth inch paper. And honestly, it makes no difference how wide the paper is. If you don't use a long enough strip, you're gonna get something that looks like this. Unless you're trying to make it like this, this is not necessarily the best look. All right, then I made this one earlier where I made the same length of paper, which was six inches, but I made it into a smaller circle on the template. This was a larger circle, this is a smaller one. See the difference? The paper is still six inches long, but because I put it in a smaller area, it made it more compact and more sturdy. Depends on which look you really like. Just remember, it's trial and error. You have one that messes up, it's okay. Save it. You can give it away. Make a magnet out of it and put it on your fridge to hold your grocery list. It's okay. It's not fatal if it doesn't turn out perfect every time. Okay, so we're going to make this, the flowers now. So I've already done three and I'm going to make a total, I think, of nine. I took the paper out of the package. And I took nine strips out. So I'll do one more here. I'll show you one more here. I took all the strips out, put them all together, pulled off the ends, and then decided that I really wanted to use the whole strip because I don't like that open, it, you know, it, this is, where is it? This is a little too open for me. I don't like it that open doesn't seem that sturdy either. All right, so I know people are going to ask me how long this is. I think the strips from Quilled Creations are 17 or 18 inches long. I, pu I you know, tore the ends off, so let me measure so I can kind of give you an estimate of what I'm using. This is 12. It about, it, well, I think I'm going to make them 16 inches, so let me pull a little bit off. So each one of these strips that I have is approximately 16 inches long. All right, so I've got those three already done. So I have these. So I'm going to show you how to roll these and talk to you about them. All right, so I think I talked in the other video, maybe not, that there's a right side and a wrong side to the paper. The right side is smooth. The wrong side has ridges from where they have cut, you know, when, when it comes down and cuts the paper, it leaves ridges on both sides of the paper, like this side and this side. This side will be smooth because the force is going down. This side will have ridges here and ridges here. So I want the right side. So let me put this in. Now I tend to go tilted onto the paper, not up and down. First of all, I can't see what I'm doing. 
the little slits are so small. I need to order some new tools. I think I've stressed these poor little things out so much. You could probably use a paper bead tool for this, maybe. All right, come on, go in. All right, so it's tearing up the paper. It's not going in the way it should, so let me tear the end off. Okay, so I've got three rolled, and I'm going to roll the rest. I'm going to turn the camera off and roll the rest of them, and they will all be to size, and I will glue them so they don't come undone. And that should give me nine to make a nice size flower. I'll be back. Okay, so I finished rolling all of these, and now these are going to come off of here. And they all basically look the same. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to, I'm going to show you how to make the inside of the flower this thing right here. Okay, so when you do certain things, the depth or the width of your paper needs to be consistent with the rest of it. So I need to use the quarter inch the quarter inch paper to make the inside. So I think I have green and I have a gold. So this is the these are the colors. This one is called sage green and this is called golden. That's what we use for this. And this is where we're going to use the curling coach. Hey, I got the name right for a change. Flip this over. I put them away earlier and thought I was done and then to watch the video I went uh-oh can't see a thing I did all right so here's the curling coach upside down <laughs> oh my gosh okay so I would like a little color on my inside so I think I'm gonna take one of these and I'm going to rip it. Just, I forgot to take the ends off. Hang on. There's the end off of that one and the end off of this one. So there we go. And then I'm going to use maybe two of these. Alright, so I want a little I want a little green in the middle and then the yellow or the golden and then a little green. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. So in the beginning, remember you do the right side and the wrong side of the paper. Curling coach, you insert this into the middle of the hole right there. It's hard to see. There you go, right there. I'm gonna put it in there and then I'm gonna hunt for the slot because when you put it in here, it takes up this much of the width of your metal piece here, and it's hard to get stuff slipped in there. I would like it if they make this a little longer so that when you do the curling coach, you're not having to hunt. And there we go. All right, so this is on. And you start curling. And then I just keep twisting. And I'm, my fingers are around the, the peg. It's called a peg in the beginning. Around the peg so it doesn't come unfurled. All right, so there's no glue involved in this. So you're going to do the second color. But you're not going to glue anything. So what you're going to do is... You're going to slip this in between this and the peg. So you need at least an inch of a tail so that this will go smoothly. And it will unfurl, but don't come unglued. I'll show you what happens. All right, so we're going to insert this and kind of stick it up inside there. See how it's kind of gone up inside? Then I'm going to mash down on my peg. 
and I'm going to start curling. Now what's going to happen is something's going to flip in a second. It's going to go boing. There you go. There's that little flap. It's okay. Don't flip out. It's supposed to do that. And you just keep rolling. All right, so I want to add more of the golden. So I take this again and you insert it inside here. But remember, press down on this to hold this because it'll go like a spring and you will be very unhappy quiller. All right, so now we're going to roll some more. There, see, there it did it. It flings. When both of them do that, then you need to unroll it and start over again for the part where you were trying, trying to insert it in there. When both of them fling like that, there's a problem. All right, so we're going to roll, 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 roll. All right, now is my little touch of green. I just need enough to, you know, kind of surround it. Here we go again. This time I'm going to put it, maybe I do it so you can see it. All right, see, you want it to insert right up there, up close to where this part is here. So you just put it in there. And then you just roll. You can glue it now, which I suggest you do. Because if you don't, and you let your hand off of it and it comes unrolled, you got to start all over again. So, here's my little glue, which I am having a difficult time squeezing out. Now, I put a little more on these because they're bigger pieces to hold. And yes, you're going to get it on a curling coat, on the curling, curling coat, so you're going to need to probably take a wet paper towel and wipe it off. Smooth the glue out, rub it in nicely. Okay, so this is where people get panicky and they go too fast. You have a little metal pin, basically, slipped inside tons of paper and it's not going to want to come out. So what you do is you hold this in one hand, this in the other, and you kind of wiggle and pull. If you just go out like this, what you will do is take the inside of the paper and you'll have this little twisty thing coming out this hole. And again, you're going to be an unhappy quiller. All right, so it won't be completely flat because you've pulled, I don't know if this is going to focus. See how it has that little bump there of the green? Just a tiny bump. All right, so how you saw that is you lay it down on a flat surface and mash with your finger and it straightens out that little bump. Or you can take something like this, press down on it, and it makes it completely flat. This is, I don't want this to be flat. I want to make something nice with it. Let me put this in the glue. All right, so um, I don't want to use a piece of equipment to do this, although I will show you how you can do it. If you don't own this, what I'm about to show you, it doesn't matter, I'll show you both ways. This is called a mini, a mini mold. It looks like an ice tray that has lots of different circle bubbles. You can use this two ways. You can put this inside a mold and then stick your finger in there and it'll sink down into make you know, a dome. Or you can do it this way where you go over the bubble and then you will get a dome. I don't know if I have enough paper on this one. So what you do is you take this thing right here and you take four fingers, two thumbs, two fingers, and gently push down on your paper. Now, if you don't have enough paper to do this, it won't go all the way to the bottom. This one is a little too small, so it makes a ridge around the edge, which I don't really care for. So this one will extend it out longer to make it look smoother. Although. Maybe you don't like that, so what you can do is push this back in, kind of go like this with it a little bit, so that you can mash it flat and start all over. So what I will do is, I will show you how to do it with your finger. All right, this is your cheapest tool right here. So you take your finger and your thumbs, and you go around and you push and turn and push and turn. 
I don't want this to sit up too high, but I also don't want it caved in either. There we go. So there it is. There's the inside. There's the outside. Once you get it to where you like it, take your glue and generously but carefully put it on the inside of your little dome. Take your finger and rub it around in there nice and liberally, just not on the part that's going to sit on your board because then it's going to stick. All right, so usually I let these dry about 15 or 20 minutes or I leave them on the board upside down at night so the glue can dry and I make sure it's not going to pop and just wait. When you have one pop, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It is not funny. All right, so I'm going to put this on the board and here we have the circle where we have the grid. Put this in the middle. And you're going to need those pins I talked about earlier. Let me just put them out here so I can see them. Then I'm going to put one smack dab in the middle. So that it's nice and snug. Alright, so you need your glue and the pins to do the next part. Here are the little petals wannabe petals. I don't know how many I need so I may have done more than what I need or just enough I don't know. All right so remember the side where you tear that you know how you tear the paper? This is the torn side right here you want to glue that to this you don't want people to see the torn side. So you take this you hold it in your hand so the torn side goes that way See, it's going this way. Then to make the petals or a teardrop, you pinch. And that's what you get. All right, so let's do it again. Where's the glue? Here's the glued edge right there. I'm going to put it this way. Then I'm going to pinch. And some of them will look thicker than others, but they all basically look the same because you've turned the work the same way. All right, so here is the glued edge. I'm going to hold it like this and pinch. And there it is right there. You're done. You know, if you glue, if you do this in red and you glue these together, you make a little heart except for you would pinch these a little further so it would come down a little further. How about that? Alright, so let's go. Here's the glued edge. Go this way and pinch. Leave it alone after you pinch it. Don't fool with it. Don't try to rearrange the paper. Glued edge this way and pinch. Alright, so I'm going to finish pinching these. Whoops. And if you have too many, I have a future project for you to use them up. No big deal. And if you're a beginner, the best thing to do is practice rolling a whole bunch of them till you get the feel of the paper and the pressure and what you're capable of doing. Oh, there's one that's not glued. Son of a gun, look at that. And he didn't unroll. It's a miracle. All right, so I guess we won't be pinching this one right away. So I don't want to mess up the glue. All right, you are glued too tightly. Unfurl just a hair. There we go. There we go. I'm going to set you in time out. Okay, again, you don't want to see the glued edge, so to avoid that, you're going to glue this edge to this. So put a little glue. And because this has the grid lines, north, south, east, west, you should probably start there. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, and wait, before I glue this on, let me, well, I can glue this one on, it doesn't matter. All 
right, let me put the pins in here. So you put straight pins in so that you can make sure that this stays butted up against here while it's drying. And then I always try to put a pin here too, just to make sure it's nice and stable. All right. Something to keep in mind is when you roll these, the paper winds a certain direction and it looks, it looks different. Let me show you. One, okay, so this is one direction. Wait, how do I show it to you that way? And this is a different direction. Can you see they look different? The paper here is going up. This one, the paper is tilting down. When you glue petals on a flower or glue anything, you need to make sure that all your bendy parts go the same way. So this one, the paper is going around clockwise, so I will make sure I turn them so that everything goes the same direction. Like I said, consistency in quilling is very important. All right, so I'm going to glue that there, and that's a lot of glue. Oof. All right, put my pin in here, and then my pin in here. Now, let's see, I need to go this way. Not as much glue, don't get carried away there. Put that one this way. And everything is going clockwise. You leave it pinned so that it doesn't Let's see, am I going this way? Nope, going this way. Okay. Um, you leave it penned until the glue dries. Sometimes it's overnight, sometimes it's a couple hours. Usually I'm not in a hurry doing quilling because I know it takes time for the glue to dry and after rolling all this stuff, I don't want anything to come undone. So I'll leave it overnight. There's a pin there and a pin in here. All right, so now we have to figure out what we're gonna do with the rest of the flower. I have enough that I can put one in between every space, so I think that's what I'm going to do. So this is facing the proper direction. I'm going to squeeze it in the middle. Now, you can only just put glue here, but you may be a little dot here and a little dot on this side because it's going to be touching the other two petals, and you want to make sure that it stays. Oops, we're going the wrong direction here. Right, and when you do it, line it up with the grid so that all the petals are going, you know, the right direction, the points. There we go. And this is clockwise. Little dot here, little dot there. And we are clockwise and we're going to squeeze ourselves in there. So this one really needs the pins because I'm forcing this to go into a place where this one's a little too fat to be in. So I'm going to make sure I pin it for sure. That's why you need to pin. Some people can lay their stuff on there and it does fine. I am not one of those people. All right, that's clockwise. Do a little dab here. And remember, the glued side from making the creation, making the petal, is glued up against the center of the flower so nobody can see that work. All right, and we're gonna squeeze this in here. And I wanna make sure it goes along that line. There we go. Because see, it's following this line here. All right, this is clockwise, and this is the last one. And this one's really going to get squeezed in there because I think it's kind of big. So, in order for it to fit, sometimes I just pinch it a little bit more. And we need to go this way, clockwise. All right, so I'm going to force that in there, and it's going to distort this other one. But I can fix that by mashing down on the point and then going back and fixing it later. 
So I'm going to take this and put this in between the layers of the paper. And there we go. So let me remove all these pins. And there you have it. It's all pinned. Whoops. That's what it looks like all pinned. All right, so it needs to dry for about, I don't know, 20 minutes to half an hour because you have really thick layers of paper on here and I would let it dry a little while. I wouldn't push my luck because <laughs> my luck does not run well, doesn't run good sometimes when it comes to stuff like this. And you, um, you want it to dry completely before you start playing around with it. All right, so I'm going to show you something else that will be maybe in the future we'll see how this goes and it's a project that I did made from leftovers all these little things like this that are left over with all these little pieces of paper from this project that I've done now three times <laughs> I will take all these little white strips and I will roll this one not this one will go back in the uh, maybe these two will go back in the bag because they're too long to waste on that. So I will take these little pieces and I'll roll them into different shapes. And this is what they'll be when they grow up. This is a bowl made of leftover pieces. Um, I can't remember where I got the idea, but this thing is like six, six, eight, ten years old. I mean, it's it's nothing new. So what you do is you take yourself a bowl cover it in saran wrap and tuck the saran wrap underneath really well then you smear it with glue and then you look at all your different shapes and you set them on here and you glue them just like you would glue on the board with the bag over it except for you will fit in pieces where you think they'll look cool and they hang over you know you don't want it to hang over so you'll find something here and then you might find another little piece that's an odd shape that will fit in here. Let me see if I have any odd shape stuff. Oh, here I do. The only problem is, is you need to make sure they're all the same depth or close to it. So I can't put this little tiny one here because it's um, eighth of an inch paper and these are the quarter inch ones. So you need to divide your stuff up so that you can make sure you have the right height. All right, so here's one that's not glued very well, something that went horribly wrong, I would glue it and then I would stick it next to this one. Or, let, there you go, like that. And that's what I did with this. This is, let me see if I can get it to go in closer and not be blurry, which has not worked so far. All right, here we go. These are all different shapes, size, colors but they're all the same width of paper because it's too hard to, you, you can't get it smooth. Like you want it to be able to sit on something. So these are all, what size are these? These are all quarter inch. Except for there's some that are the little tiny pieces that I rolled and plugged them in spaces where I needed to plug something in. So there's little pegs in here that are very small, like that little orange one right there. It's very small. It is only the eighth of an inch, but I had it wrapped around enough that I just stuck it in a hole so that these two, these three would be connected when they were glued. All right, so it's just, and it has a ton of that coating on it. I put way too much on it, but listen, it's hard as a rock. <laughs> so there it is. All done. Like I said, I've had it many years, and the stuff is never yellowed. It's never broken because, you know, I don't abuse it, at least not too much. So what you could do is find yourself a bowl or a jar, and every time you have odd pieces, roll them up at the end of your project, take these little strips, roll them before you leave the table, and then what you can do is you can make yourself a bowl or a vase or something that you enjoy with this stuff. And it didn't cost you any extra money to make it. 
Oh, this one's got full of glue, so I can't use that one. Um, it didn't cost you any extra money to make it. Oh, well, I want to. Oh, my goodness gracious. All right. Oh, let me tear this off. It's not even. Let me find my board. And I'll put this one in the six. Well, it says six. I don't know if it's really six. Wait, oh, back out. There we go. I'm gonna put this in here and let it unfurl. I'm not gonna do anything fancy schmancy with it because it's so small. But it's got a nice tight coil to it. I'm gonna glue it. And this is a good way for practicing your shapes is go on Pinterest and find there's a sheet on Pinterest someplace. Um, if I can find it on my Pinterest board, I will put the link in the description box below and I can link you to all my um, quilling, my quilling pages so you can look at all the different stuff that I've saved over the last 10 years. All right, so there's this one. You can do something with it, but honestly, it's kind of small. So let's try a different one. Let's do this one right here. Just roll. And then I'm going to put it in the three and let it go to town and unfurl. I'm going to glue it. All right, so this one I'm going to do a little different. This one I'm going to make, I don't know if they call this one a diamond or what they call it. You know how you held, how I had you hold the glued part in your hand like this and then pinch to make the petals? You're not going to do that this time. The glue part, you're going to leave on top, on the side, on either the top side or the bottom side, because this is what we're going to do. You're going to take your circle, well, it's hard to see on the white, and you're going to pinch on both ends. And it makes this. So when you glue it to something else, you're going to glue on that side there. Uh, you'll take these two, and when you glue flower, you'll glue it so that you can't see that. The glue, the, um, see, there's the edge on this one before I glued it. And here's the edge on this one where I glued it. And when you glue them, you glue them together and no one can see where you did it. All right? All right, so then every time you sit down and you finish a project, roll up your scrap paper that you think is short enough that you can use it for something and make different shapes out of it. Let's do a square. You know, they make tools that, um, and I don't buy them, but they make tools where you have different shapes like squares and ovals and stuff like that where you wrap your paper around them. All right, we're gonna roll this. Let's see if I can get a square out of this one. I don't know if I have enough paper in it. Come on, unneeded in it. There we go. And depending on what you're making will determine where you'd glue stuff together. Because you never want to see the glued part where you glue your piece together. All right, so to make a square, you take this and you just give light pinches here and then light pinches here. And there's your square. Oh, it's not focusing, there we go. There's your square. So this is simple. It takes a light touch, you don't know you get all crazy. The paper will succumb to your will. <laughs> So there's a square, and so when you do a bowl, you might use a square and put it next to a circle, which is next to a petal, which is next to something I need to glue, 
and you need to fill in a space you fill it in with a little peg like this and then you can put this one over here so on and so forth and that's how this got started I took all the same papers I went through my whole jar of scraps and I made sure that everything was the same with the paper and that's the the scraps and this takes hundreds of these we're not talking 50 or 60 we're talking hundreds and sometimes thousands of your leftovers to make something a lot of this stuff is left over from kits where I did the kits and I had leftover paper that I wasn't going to use so I rolled them up put them in the jar and saved them and then I ended up making a bowl and it's like I said it's pretty sturdy so there you go I hope this was helpful for those of you who are inspired to do quilling you will find a million different ways to do it. Somebody will tell you they love this tool better than that tool or this company better than that company and they don't glue blah, 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 blah. It's okay. It's just, like, it's just like journaling. Everybody has their own style. Everybody does it their own way. This is exactly the same way. Your square will not look like my square, which will not look like somebody else's square. My peg will not look the same as your peg, blah, blah, blah. So hang in there. Keep trying. All right, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye. But wait, there's more. <laughs> I forgot to unpin this. <laughs> All right, so here we go. When you unpin something, it is really a good idea to put a little pressure on what you're doing before you pull the pins out and be gentle. These are delicate little things, sort of. Because you've put these pens in between layers of paper, you don't want to pull too hard and then it unfurls the paper as you're pulling out the pen. You've done all this work, spent all this time waiting for the glue to dry, which, wow, this requires a lot of patience. Whoop, this one moved a bit, okay. And then the last one. And Ta-da! There it is. There's the, there's the front. There's the back. And if you, I think I got all of them turned. I did. Son of a gun, look at that. If you look, all of them, all the papers are going this way. Like I said, consist whoops, consistency is really important when you quill. This one's a little tilted, so I would kind of nudge it back a different direction. Sometimes you have to pinch after you finish. You can go back and make adjustments. They won't be huge adjustments because they're glued and it's pretty much set in stone. Yep, there they go. So there you are. There's a very simple basic flower where you made a dome in the middle and then you did teardrops. This is a very basic flower. Like basically what we call a starter flower or a beginner flower. So there you go. All right. I hope this helps everybody and I hope it encourages you to try quilling. Um, you don't need a lot of fancy stuff. Look, if you don't have the money to invest in some of the things, invest in the basic things. Like, um, if you don't have money for quilling paper, let me give you some advice. All that scrapbook paper you've been hoarding, uh, cut it into one quarter inch strips or one eighth inch strips and try doing this. Now, you're not going to get the same result because scrapbook paper only has the color on the top of the paper not all the way through the paper so when you do it all your color and loveliness will be here where you can't see all of it and then it'll be white right here on the tops so it it doesn't matter because if you're practicing it doesn't really matter you want to be able to feel the paper you want to be able to get to know the paper a little bit and to play with it so that you can make your stuff better when you buy quilling paper where you've made the investment Okay, well, happy quilling, guys. See you later.